I have to avoid the flowers. I can't walk in a straight line. Today we are out at Mill Creek Ridge, which is this beautiful ridge line running down towards the Columbia River and up all the way towards Mount Hood. We own about um, 400, a little over 400 acres. Obviously today you can see how beautiful Mill Creek Ridge is in the springtime. It just jumps right out at you. Um, but Columbia Land Trust doesn't conserve properties just for its natural beauty alone. Usually there's a little bit more to it. Uh, Columbia Land Trust is protecting the clean air and clean water that we all need every single day to live in this place. We are protecting the scenic beauty that, uh, I mean, just look around any of these places uh, here where we live. It's just such a spectacular spot. Um, we are protecting the natural resources, our farms, local food and uh, forests uh, that they provide benefits uh, back to all of us. Uh, we are protecting the wildlife habitat so that the birds uh, and fish can migrate uh, in these incredible migrations that they have that are on a continental scale. And Columbia Land Trust has programs designed to really connect people to nature. In the Portland area, we're partners with Audubon Society in a backyard habitat program where we're bringing nature right into people's backyards and helping them learn and know and understand more about the nature of the Northwest. I've seen coyote, um, fox, um, lots of bird species, ground squirrels, a few tree squirrels, uh, have smelled skunk. I've seen golden eagle up here. Lots of red tail, uh, the turkey buzzards are back, bluebirds, uh, the meadow larks, uh, a variety of woodpeckers. It, it's just, it's fabulous. We have a number of uh, sensitive species up here of birds and that that have declined in, in areas across the country. And this is an area where they can have a whole lot of uh, habitat, a whole lot of safety in terms of raising their young. And, uh, and for pollinators in particular, areas away from intense spraying of pesticides and herbicides and that that we have in the county because we have a large cherry orchard industry here surround, almost surrounding uh, this conservation area. And then we also have a large wheat industry as well. So those areas are kind of our intense agricultural areas and this leaves some of that um, protected from those uh, practices. My name is Glenn Lamb. I'm the executive director at Columbia Land Trust. And I was one of about a dozen people that in 1989 got together to form the Land Trust. We believe that we live in one of the most amazing parts of the world. And the things that make this place so amazing also attract a lot of people to live here. And with projections for our population to grow significantly in the coming decades, we've formed an organization that's voluntary and collaborative. We're bringing people together who want to conserve the nature of the Northwest. And we've developed unique tools to do that, uh, working collaboratively with private landowners to conserve some of these most amazing places. Our natural resources provide so much opportunity uh, and they provide our energy. We have the Dalles Dam here behind us. They provide uh, uh, resources, uh, gravel. They provide our trees and wood and our clean air and our clean water. And one thing that we found over uh, all of these years of settling in this area is that um, there can be conflict around the use of these resources. And one of the things that really attracted me to Columbia Land Trust was that this was a group who really wanted to take the time to get to know each of the local communities and to learn how they interacted with natural resources and to come up with collaborative solutions that protect all those things that we share, the values that we share about the great natural resources here, about clean air and clean water, our forests and our farms. And the Land Trust is a group that's really uh, wanting to protect those by working in partnership with local landowners and communities. My name is Kate Conley and I work for Columbia Land Trust on the stewardship team. I manage projects restoring and maintaining our properties, all of our protected lands. In particular, my territory is the Oregon side of the Columbia River Gorge. We've actually determined that these ridge lines like Mill Creek Ridge are really incredible biodiversity hotspots. There's just a huge variety of plants and animals that live on ridges like this. We're sandwiched in between the Cascade Mountains on the west and the drier shrub step ecosystems on the east. And we're kind of this unique transition zone, sort of a perfect middle ground where you have some of the plants and animals from high up and some from lower down, some from wet and some from dry. And so we've got just amazing diversity up here. So this is a spot that we really don't want to lose to development.
My name is Bruce Lumper. I live across Mill Creek, or I live across the ridge down in Mill Creek. And we got concerned and involved in this project back in the early uh, 2000s when there was a push for some real estate development on the ridge. And we were concerned that this was a great open space, good habitat for wildlife, good habitat for all the bugs and bees and birds in the area, and wanted to see if something could be done about uh, preserving it and conserving that land. About 15 years ago, the Wasco County was uh, undertook a study of the rural lands to the west of the Dalles because they were being developed rapidly and there were some water issues in particular that were constraining that development. And as part of that work, a question came up about if there were critical areas identified to the west of the Dalles that needed conservation, who would be the, an entity to work with to do that conservation? Would it be an established organization or is that one an organization that the county should start on their own? And so a second small study was done by Wasco County Planning Department and Columbia Land Trust came out as uh, the top of that study that said this is the organization that we should work with, they have a lot of credibility in the area and they have a lot of um, uh, work experience already in doing this kind of work. When we first got involved in the conservation of Mill Creek Ridge, we found that this parcel where I'm standing today was actually planned for residential development. There was gonna be a 5,000 uh, square foot home built up here. The county had already signed off on that with another huge outbuilding and a 2,500 square foot swimming pool it was all gonna be right here where we're standing today. So we were hoping that we instead we could preserve it as more of a, um, a natural area like a nature preserve. So we worked with um, some really helpful neighboring landowners and um, various funders, people who got to come out here and get excited about this amazing spot and help pay for the acquisition. And so we were able to first purchase this property where we're standing right now in 2010. And so that was able to set this aside and remain undeveloped forever. And then we've been working since then um, up through February of this year, February 2016, we purchased our last piece. We've purchased five properties so far on Mill Creek Ridge over those years, and that's how we put together that um, continuous ownership of over 400 acres. So this whole area includes some properties that are zoned for 10-acre residential development, and that means that it could have been subdivided and there could have been all these 10-acre home sites up here. So it's a very attractive place. Obviously, the natural beauty makes it attractive. It's really close to the city of the Dalles, and you know most population centers are growing. So it was pretty important to set this aside before the creep of all those homes comes further out, reaches further out from the city, and targets places like this, just like the, the large home that was planned to go up here. We know those things are coming. So it's really important for us to set aside some really critical places. And of course, there's always going to be more human development, but it's important to set aside some places before everything is taken over by development. So when Columbia Land Trust was deciding where we should be working within the Columbia River Gorge, as I mentioned, this was really identified as a biodiversity hotspot because of its unique location. We've had botanists come out and help um, survey what plants are up here, and we've had um, some bird specialists come and do bird surveys. We've at this point identified over 90 different species of native plants and over 60 different bird species have been spotted up here during bird surveys. So the, the wildlife diversity is amazing. We have deer and elk that graze up here and the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife has designated this as um, critical winter range for those grazing wildlife. Um, also, Folks like the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board and the American Bird Conservancy have identified how important these natural habitats are. Both of those organizations gave us major grants to help us purchase the property up here. So it's obviously supported by a lot of natural resource agencies. Conserving properties like this is really important, not just to all those plants and animals and everything from the you know, pollinators and the, the bees flying around the balsam root today to the birds that we were talking about earlier. But it's also important for people to have places of beauty close to home. We have a city of the Dalles, you know, the city is really close and um, we've got people who live in more rural areas all throughout this area. 
And the character of this area would really be lost if we lost all the places that are undeveloped. So it's kind of um, it's sort of an intangible benefit to people in that way. But if people don't have a chance to ever get out and see places like this, they're not going to really be able to value natural habitats and this natural beauty and it'll get forgotten over time. My name is Susan Stelzer. I just am um, fortunate to live down the road from this access about a quarter mile and I get a look up at the ridge uh, every day. I was up here Saturday morning with a group of hikers. Had an 11 year old girl in our group and she just loved it and we talked about taking care of the land and why, uh, you know, why we do that and, and um, she, she just loved it. Columbia Land Trust only really works with willing sellers. So we never try to push people off of their property. We don't try to claim it for our own. Um, this site here was going to be developed, but the owner's plans were falling through. And so luckily they were willing to sell it for conservation instead of trying to sell it to another developer. Columbia Land Trust uh, will only work with landowners who want to work with us. And there have been cases where we work with landowners who decide they want to go in a different direction. And in that case, the land trust doesn't particularly pursue that. But sometimes we've conserved land in communities that have caused some fear or concern from other members of the community, that they are concerned that we might take away their ability to fish or hunt or enjoy the property. Uh, and so in those cases, we've taken a lot of time to talk with neighbors, to talk with county commissioners, elected officials, and come to understand what the challenges and issues are. And we often find that we underneath what might be some original uh, initial conflict or concern or fear about what we're going to do that we uncover that we do in fact have values in common that we can work toward. So uh, in, uh, we often allow some traditional uses of land that are in the very consistent with our uh, values of protecting the land. And we also control for weeds and we control for catastrophic wildfire and those are all things that local communities have concerns about. Columbia Land Trust works with private landowners to assess the values of the property and then we work with the landowner to develop a forever conservation plan. Sometimes landowners want to donate the land outright to the land trust, in which case we become the owners and stewards of that land for now and into the future. In other cases, landowners enter into voluntary conservation agreements with the land trust, and we agree to defend the conservation values, but the landowners can still live on and or enjoy the property, but without causing any damage to the natural resources. Another property, the one that we most recently purchased in 2016, that one had been um, sort of in the preparatory stages for development. They'd put in a driveway and they were looking at the feasibility of building on top of the hill. But again, those plans didn't work out for them at that time and they had to sell to someone else. And um, eventually it was sold to somebody who wanted to make it a conservation property in the long term. So we're really working with opportunities where we find a combination of the natural resources that we're really targeting for protection and the landowners who are willing to sell to us or donate to us for conservation. It's often a big challenge for us to get from the point of deciding we want to acquire a property for conservation to finally signing the deal and owning that land. But even though that feels like a challenge to me, what the biggest challenge is, is taking care of that property forever. Once we own that land, we've got to protect it in perpetuity. That's our mission and that's, um, you know, that's what we live by. So. My job with the stewardship team is to take care of those properties and today we were out at the site of a more recent acquisition up here on Mill Creek Ridge. So we're just starting to put up um, some signage to describe what the property is, mark our boundaries. We installed a new gate today so that we can prevent any more vehicles from driving up onto the ridge. and. Um, we put in a boot brush, which is so that people who are coming to visit our property can clean any weed seeds off of their boots. We really want to protect the native plant diversity at this site. And one of the biggest threats really is invasion by noxious weeds. We have um, one invader out here called rush skeleton weed, and it is just really aggressive. Once it gets started, it's really hard to get rid of. So not only do we want people to clean their boots so that they don't bring any other weeds to our area, 
we want people to clean their boots on their way out so they don't carry that skeleton weed to any other properties that they might be visiting later. So there's quite a bit to do, just sort of that maintenance level stuff with the fencing and the signs. Um, but then once we've owned the property for a little bit longer and we've decided what of all what all of our um, more of our natural resource priorities are on that property, we usually do some restoration work. On this property, we have the benefit of, of really high quality habitat already. Most of what we're going to do is just protecting the best of what's already here. But we're also going to try to enhance that. So we will be doing some weed control, um, trying to get rid of that skeleton weed and some of the other invaders out here. Um, and then in a couple places on this property where there was a little bit more human use in the past, um, farming or grazing or just um, you know places where people congregated, there's been a little bit more damage to the plant life. So in those sites, we might actually come through and try to kill off all the weeds and then reseed that with natives, try to get our native grasses reestablished. And then once we do that, we'll also try to fill in with the, just the diversity of all the different um, wildflowers that you see out here in the springtime. Columbia Land Trust has a great volunteer program. I think it's great for the volunteers and it's amazing for us as well. Out here on Mill Creek Ridge, our volunteers have been really critical to our work. We have all 400 plus acres to cover and that's a lot when you want to do something like map all of the noxious weeds that are growing here. We had a whole crew of volunteers come out um, a couple of summers ago and helped map out where all the weeds are located so that we could come back later and have them um, treated to control those weeds. Um, and then today we've got volunteers who are out putting up boundary posts on our new acquisition. They carried those posts all the way up the hill, um, you know, a few miles around and up the steep hill, and they'll be pounding in those posts to mark where our boundaries are. We have a volunteer site steward program and that's uh, where volunteers kind of adopt a property and they're a long time volu long term volunteer for that property. So Bruce and Susan are two of our site stewards here at Mill Creek Ridge. They're the ones installing the posts today and it's just great to have them around because they live nearby and they can visit frequently and they're able to keep an eye on things and let us know if they see any issues, talk to neighbors and explain what we're doing up here and really just um, be our extra eyes and ears on the ground. My wife and I, and then our neighbor on the Browns Creek side, Susan Stelzer, we're all voluntary site stewards for Columbia Land Trust for this, uh, for this property and this ridge. And what we do is voluntary site stewards, and what we're doing today, we're going to be removing some cross fencing, we're going to be adding some additional signage on the boundaries of the area, and at the access point, some larger signage at the access point, so that folks will know when they come here, what, what property they're coming on to, what are some of the do's and don'ts of being there uh, in, that, in this area. So access is allowed for anyone, it's just uh, we're asking them folks to be very sensitive when they're here. In addition to the management of that area and the care of that area is, is uh, educating young people and the people of the community about the area and the protection of the area and making it available for uh, for projects and, and for learning environments and for uh, activities such as for the scouts and that kind of thing. And, and uh, that will be happening, I see, as that as a next phase of this uh, piece of the, of the pro project. Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board is a funding organization, a state funding organization for these kind of projects and they've provided quite a bit of money for acquisition on, on this conservation area and one of the pieces that they uh, supported is that this provides upland uh, areas for uh, water quality does sounds a little surprising maybe because most of the time we focus on right near the creeks and the rivers for water quality. This in fact provides water quality or helps with water quality away from the streams but still in the watersheds for the, for the water that falls and eventually runs off or comes out as groundwater lower down in the, in the watershed. I was thinking this morning when coming out is uh, about the uh, how easy it is to do this and how it is really not work and it's true I think a lot for folks that have a passion for something and I know that Joseph Campbell when he was writing his books he he had this famous quote he, he told folks that uh, to, to follow your bliss to do what it is that uh, feeds your passion and for me like today being out 
uh, doing some work uh, on the management of the property and enjoying the outdoors and, and uh, feeling like we're doing something good for the community doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, yeah. My name is Susan Stelzer and um, sitting here on the newest piece of land acquired by Columbia Land Trust, uh, part of the Mill Creek Ridge project. Today what we're doing is we're putting up uh, a gate uh, with you know, signage saying what this place is. Uh, you know, welcome, you can walk in here, but no motorized vehicles, no hunting, uh, no horseback riding at this point. When's the best time to come up to the Mill Creek Ridge? Anytime. Um, spring is, is fabulous because of all the flowers. Summer is, uh, is beautiful up here. It's, it's, I call it golden. Some people think it's brown, but it is golden up here. And you just have these incredible vistas, the blue, blue Columbia uh, to the east and the snow-capped mountains uh, right in your face. Fall is spectacular because you've got fall colors. Uh, and it's a different, and the sun's in different angles, so you have different lighting. And winter is uh, just very barren. Uh, I've been up here in the winter and have had clouds come up. I'm in the sun, clouds are below me, and they come and swirl up around you. And it, it's just a, um, you know, a magical experience. My personal involvement in it, the Columbia Land Trust and uh, the Mill Creek Ridge project is for future generations and had this young lady, 11 year old Reagan, with us Saturday morning on a hike and for her to see and experience this beauty and in, in her words it's like, you know, it's a really good thing that people want to take care and uh, preserve all these flowers so that other people can enjoy them. So if we have an 11 year old who sees the value, um, that my, my job is done. <laughs> right now we're standing up at the top of Mill Creek Ridge and Mill Creek Ridge, we named it after Mill Creek, which runs down here. It's coming down from Mount Hood, the foothills of Mount Hood and flowing down into the Columbia down at the bottom here. We don't have a ton of public access routes into this property, so we can't encourage a lot of people coming out. Um, one of the roadways that leads up here is a private road that goes through a couple other private properties, so that's not open to the public. But we do now own one property that goes all the way down to the road, so people could come in from that site. And because it's so important to protect the native plants and wildlife at this site, we don't want a lot of motorized use or um, other activities that would be disturbing the natural environment. So. It's really just open for walking, hiking, and bird watching, and enjoying the flowers. And we don't really have developed trails. There's an old track that runs along the, the crest of the ridge here, and that can serve as a trail. So if people to, do come out here, I would encourage them to stay on the, the existing tracks and trails and just come on foot. No bicycles or horses or ATVs or anything like that and just leave everything as you found it, no picking the flowers or picking up rocks or anything like that. But we do hope that people will come and see this place. That's how we all get to appreciate our natural world more. And it's wonderful to be able to share that with our friends and family and especially bringing small children up here is great. They get really excited about this sort of environment. When I was a kid, most of our family vacations were all camping trips. I think about it now and I figure we probably couldn't afford to do anything else. But really, we had such a great time, you know, camping out in the woods and along streams and just anywhere that we went. I think I just really developed my love of nature from getting out into the natural world at a young age. And when I was really young, under five years old, we lived in an old farmhouse on um, about 100 acres. So when I was just a little kid, I got to run around in the fields all the time. And I think that really stuck with me. And I think it's important for people to get out when they're young and just really develop that appreciation from the get-go. So one of the really amazing things about this property is this section here, which is all Oregon white oak woodlands. It's a pretty rare type of habitat. There's just not a lot of oak woodlands 
because they're sandwiched between this narrow band where you've got the Cascade Mountains on the west side and then you've got the dry desert on the east side and so it's just this little narrow band of Oregon white oak east of the Cascades in Oregon. So we're in that band right now and not only is it naturally a limited habitat type but a lot of it has been lost through development, you know, trees getting cut down for houses or whatever. Um, but even in all the oak woodlands that still exist, there aren't very many where the native understory grasses are still intact. And this is a really cool example of native understory in an oak woodland. We still have the native bunch grasses here. And in the springtime, you'll just see a ton of different wildflowers popping up in between all the clumps of grasses. It's just really spectacular. And I was out here a couple weeks ago with a local botanist who's been working in the gorge for years. And she really encouraged Columbia Land Trust to conserve this particular property because of these oak woodlands and their, more particularly, their native understory. We were out here about two weeks ago and it was just like every flower that you could imagine. And right now you can see it's all, the big balsam root is blooming, but in the early spring, there's just like all these tiny little flowers and it's really amazing. We have a lot of partners who help us out with managing our properties. So whether it's fish biologists from the state or the tribes or the forest service or botanists, we've got some great volunteers from the Native Plant Society of Oregon who help us with projects on our lands. And it's some of the professionals like that who really teach me a lot about what we have and what we're taking care of and help us make our management decisions. One of the biggest parts of our work is deciding how to protect the lands that we own and you know, there's not really like a cookie cutter approach. There's not always sort of a recipe like you just do this and that and that, and then you've got a perfect habitat. There's always some experimentation and monitoring and different ways you could go that um, you've got to go through those processes before you can really decide what's the best way to take care of the landscapes that we protect. I moved to Oregon about 10 years ago to work with the Hood River Watershed Group. So I've been involved with natural resources management the whole time that I've lived here in the gorge. And after that, I actually was the Watershed Council Coordinator in Wasco County, which is where we are today. I worked out of an office in the Dalles. And through both of those jobs, I just really got to appreciate all of the diversity of plants and animals and geology and everything about the natural world here in the Columbia River Gorge, which is just an amazing place. And then I actually live in Hood River and I saw that there was an opportunity to work with Columbia Land Trust because they were acquiring a property right there in Hood River. So I thought, this is amazing. I could have a job managing a natural area in my own backyard. And I jumped on that opportunity and Luckily, I already knew a lot of the people who work in natural resources in our area. So that's really been a huge benefit to me working with Columbia Land Trust. And it's just, it's an amazing job. I get to work on the most beautiful properties in one of the most beautiful places in the world. And I get to spend my time protecting what I really love, which is the natural beauty and just, um, just kind of all, how amazing it is when you get to see um, the interactions between all different levels of our natural environment, whether it's the soil and learning all about soil quality and all the crazy diversity of life that actually lives underfoot, all the way up through the plants and the trees and the water that flows through our area. Um, there's a lot of focus on salmon restoration in the Columbia River Gorge, obviously. And a lot of my work in Hood River is working right along the Hood River itself, which is an incredible stream for salmon and steelhead. And just getting to work with all those different things is, is just very satisfying. <laughs>